He is known for his contributions to the field of science, particularly in the areas of physics and mathematics. He is recognized for his dedication to self-improvement and his passion for teaching. His name is Johann Philipp Ries. In the small town of Jelmhausen, Germany, a young boy named Johann Philipp Ries was born into a humble family. His father, Karl Sigismund Ries, was a talented baker, while his mother tragically passed away when he was just an infant. Raised by his wise and well-read paternal grandmother, Ries's intellect began to shine at an early age. Recognizing his potential, his instructors encouraged his father to provide him with a higher education. At the age of six, Ries started attending the local school in Jelmhausen, where his talents quickly caught the attention of his teachers. They recommended that he continue his education at a prestigious college. However, before he could pursue further studies, tragedy struck again as his father passed away. Despite this loss, Ries's grandmother and guardians arranged for him to attend Garnier's Institute in Friedrichsdorf. It was here that he developed a love for languages, becoming fluent in French and English, and delved into various subjects from the Institute's library. As Ries grew older, his passion for science became evident. Encouraged by his guardians, he enrolled at the Polytechnic School of Karlsruhe, with dreams of pursuing a career in science. However, his uncle had different plans for him and insisted that Ries become a merchant. Reluctantly, Ries became an apprentice at a paints dealer in Frankfurt. Determined to continue his studies, he made a deal with his uncle to learn the business while also pursuing his preferred subjects, such as mathematics and physics, through private lessons and attending lectures. Through hard work and dedication, Ries gained the respect of his employer and used his spare time to further his education. He attended the Institute of Dr. Poppy, where he realized his passion for teaching. Ries became a member of the Physical Society of Frankfurt and, after completing his military service in 1855, he returned to Frankfurt to become a teacher of mathematics and science. Though he initially planned to finish his training at the University of Heidelberg, a visit to his old friend and mentor, Hofrath Garnier, changed the course of his life. On September 14, 1859, Ries married and relocated to Friedrichsdorf, where he embarked on his new career as a teacher. Little did he know that his journey was just beginning, and his name would go down in history for a groundbreaking invention that would revolutionize communication forever. In the early days of the telephone, a French telegraphist named Charles Boursel had a vision of transmitting sounds and speech through electricity. He can be credited with conceiving the idea of an electric telephone, but it was Johann Philipp Ries who would bring this idea to life. Unfortunately, Boursel's idea did not receive much attention and was soon forgotten. Even Count Dumoncel, known for his enthusiasm towards promising inventions, dismissed it as a fantastic notion. It is doubtful whether Ries even knew about Boursel's concept. Ries, inspired by the mechanics of the human ear, realized that if he could create a diaphragm that imitated the vibrating membrane inside the ear and used it to interrupt an electric current, he could reproduce sounds at a distance using the magnetic power of the interrupted current. Around the same time, in 1837-38, Professor Page of Massachusetts made a significant discovery. He found that a needle or thin bar of iron, placed in a coil of insulated wire, emitted an audible sound when the current in the coil was interrupted. These sounds, known as, galvanic music, could blend into a continuous hum if the interruptions were rapid enough. Page also observed that the pitch of the sound corresponded to the rate of the current's interruption. Ries was aware of these findings, along with other discoveries by scientists like Node, Wertheim, and Marion. Armed with this knowledge, Ries set out to create his own version of the telephone. He understood that if the current interrupted by his vibrating diaphragm could be transmitted through wires and passed through a coil similar to Page's, it would produce notes similar to the ones that caused the diaphragm to vibrate. With this understanding, Ries built his rudimentary telephone, which is now displayed in the Museum of the Reichspost AMT in Berlin. Ries's achievement in bringing the electric telephone to life was a significant milestone in the history of communication. Although Boursel may have conceived the idea, it was Ries who turned it into a practical device for transmitting and receiving sounds electrically. His invention paved the way for further advancements in telecommunications and laid the foundation for the modern telephone that we use today. Do you want to explore more scientists? Who do you want to see featured next? Subscribe and leave a comment below to let me know. I'll see you in the next video.